Okay, my impression about the organization and the venue. Um, first of all, the venue is great, of course. We're in a beautiful place. We've got beautiful views on the, on the bay. Uh, Gelenchik is a very nice town, so uh, it's great to be here. Organization, I can only say it's, it's extremely well done. The quality of the wine pouring, the rhythm, planning, the visits around it. I don't think uh, from a professional point of view it could be any better. So how do I assess the overall quality of Russian wines? First of all, this is not my, uh, the first time I'm getting uh, acquainted with Russian wines. I've been uh, working uh, quite a bit in Russia in the last two years and tasted many Russian wines. And it's the second time I'm actually in the Krasnodar region to visit wineries and vineyards. I would say that overall um, quality is on the rise. The majority of the wines we tasted today and also the majority of the wines that I tasted previously are uh, technically correct wines. That does not necessarily mean that they're very good wines, but it's a good start and you can see that at that level there are also uh, wines and would probably say more and more wines that are uh, more than just technically correct, that also have a, a character, an extra quality and um, a level where they can uh, to some extent compete with uh, international wines in the same category. Um, what we see today uh, in Russia is the result of a, a still a relatively short history. Although maybe on the longer term there was a history, but it has been interrupted. So what we see now is a relatively, the result of a relatively short history in the production of quality wines. And um, if there is something that I've learned in, uh, in more than 30 years of wine experience is that in wine things uh, take time and uh, things will never happen uh, overnight. An example of that is that um, to get really good quality in wine, you need older vines, so vineyards that have been planted a long time ago. There are not that many older vines in the area yet, so that really takes time. That also means that uh, you can bet on it that as from now, with the vineyards that are now in production and are getting older, the average quality of wines will be on the rise. It will be a slow process. At the same time, we also uh, have to acknowledge that there are still uh, lots of new vineyards being planted and they will suffer from the same problem that in the early years, the, vi the vines are too young and you will not get the, the best possible quality. The other thing is experience. It takes time to figure out, when you talk about grape varieties, which grape varieties suit a climate and which suit a soil and actually which varieties suit the combination of soil and climate. And in, in Europe, uh, quite often people have uh, hundreds of years of experience and found out what, were the, what are the perfect combination. And they found that out a long time ago. In the new world, uh, this has been a more recent development, but nevertheless, they will still be uh, ahead of uh, Russia. I think at this stage, um, the wines that we tasted can compete to some extent in the price category where they are with international wines, whether they're European or new world wines. More interesting is, is the question whether local wines in the future will be able to compete with the top quality wines from, from Europe. I find that hard to say. I think it would be possible, I think it will happen, but it will take time. It will take time because um, uh, we don't know yet which varieties exactly will give the best results. What you see now is that for uh, commercial reasons, a very wide choice of varieties is being planted and is being used. And not all of them are perfectly suited to this climate. Not all of them will have the potential to produce uh, great quality wine. But some of them do, and I think we've seen some examples of that. It'll be a matter of time. So the major wine faults revealed during the tastings, for me there are two things. Let's first start with, with the work in the winery, so the wine making itself. I think for most of the wines that we tasted, they were technically correct wines. There were sometimes some problems with levels of oxidation or, or bretonomyces but the majority of the wines were technically correct wines. They were well-made wines. I have seen wineries in, in, in the area which were, were technically good, which were uh, clean, and uh, where there was a professional level of winemaking uh, present. I would say that what is at this moment the limiting factor in quality is, is what is happening in vineyards. 
I had the impression that that uh, some wines were, uh, when we're talking about wines with with foals, that some wines with foals were based on uh, grapes that were picked overripe, or at least not at the exact good moment that they should have been picked. And not all the grapes, I, I had the feeling, were were perfectly clean, meaning that some of the grapes were probably moldy, and this was something you could taste in the wines. So there is, I'm actually convinced that at this stage, uh, the biggest steps forward will be, will have to be made in the vineyards, more even than in the cellars. Going back to the cellar work, going back to vinification, uh, the biggest problem I would say would be sometimes producers try to make too big wines from grapes that are not suitable for that. So for example if you were forced to pick uh, red grapes at the moment that they were not completely ripe yet in the, in the tenants then uh, over extracting creates a problem in the wine. So then you get a wine where you can feel that there is a basis for quality and nevertheless it's not there because uh, instead of um, uh, accepting the fact that the grapes were not having a perfect ripeness and therefore uh, going to a lower level of extraction to make the wine not too tannic and not too green, the winemaker choose to, despite that, make, uh, uh, make a very extracted wine. And that is, that is actually uh, where you are limiting your quality potential. So for me, these are the, the two most important things. But I stick to what I said first, the biggest steps will have to be made in the vineyards. I have visited uh, a number of vineyards. I have visited uh, a year ago vineyards that were more used for uh, the mass wine production, for the high volume wine production. They were um, generally uh, well-kept uh, vineyards, high volume vineyards with a high, density, uh, with a high uh, production, uh, with machine harvesting. Um, the wines made from those vineyards were actually quite okay wines, or were technically good wines, but uh, of course none of them were great. For that it was too massive volume and there was not enough selection. Uh, by harvesting with the machines you, you do not select. We have also seen uh, smaller vineyards of a much better quality, a much higher quality, where you could uh, clearly see that a lot of work had been spent in, um, in, in those vineyards, that uh, the vines were well tended, that uh, there was a professional uh, ID behind it. Well, because they were not that big and they were on better soils and they were on slopes, that you would clearly, uh, you were clearly looking at a much higher potential of quality for those vineyards. So I've seen, I've seen the two sides of it. Uh, first of all, uh, this competition uh, was a very good idea. Um, in a new and upcoming uh, uh, wine producing area, um, it is important that you, from time to time, take an objective look at what is happening. And uh, the wine competition, as we have uh, done it these days, is very, very helpful for that. And I hope that um, the winemakers will understand the outcome of it. Also, if maybe some of their wines are not so positively judged, uh, but I hope that they will uh, understand why that is and that it will actually uh, motivate them to improve the quality. And I hope that for the ones who are uh, already doing well, it will be an extra motivation to set the next step so that at the end it will lead to uh, slowly, of course, on the long term, to better and better quality in the area. I think in that respect it is also important that you, that you keep on repeating these things on a yearly basis or a biannual basis, I don't know. I hope there will be enough support to continue doing the Russian wine competition for the longer term, as, uh, as I said before, in wine things take time and uh, by repetition you will come to the desired uh, end result. I would love to come back. I've uh, experienced some very good days here. As I said, I've been in the area before. Um, I find it interesting what's happening here. I like it here. I, as I said, I am sure there is a certain uh, quality potential needing time, but I would like to uh, certainly uh, like and be honored to uh, contribute to that in the future as well.